What's up, Carbon Collective? Zach Stein here, one of our founders, and I want to walk you through a quick guide that we've put together that's all about the current market correction that we are going through. So since the January 3rd, which is when the S&P 500 hit its overall record high, markets have fallen, um, and they've come down a fair amount. You can see the 90% S&P 500, 10% Barclays Aggregate US Bond Index, which is the benchmark that we use for our portfolios, has fallen 10.48% as of um, February 23rd, so yesterday. Ironically, markets are back up today, um, but we're using yesterday's data. Um, these have been uh, the best performing sector over this time has been energy. It's gone way uh, well up, which has led it to outperform our core portfolios, which divest from energy and significantly outperform our climate only portfolios, which have a much higher risk and reward. So what is going on here and what you should do about it? Overall, these type of things are to be expected when investing in the stock market. This is turbulence that is um, just par for the course. And the best thing to do is to buckle your seatbelt or maybe even buy the dip. And we'll talk about more of that in a sec. So what's going on? Um, there's a few fears that investors have right now. Um, the first is inflation. Basically, with the coronavirus like shutdown of the world economy almost two years ago now, global supply chain stopped. There was this lack of demand for basic goods, you know, with lumber and things like that. And so uh, those factories didn't have their workers come in. Those ports were sitting empty. And now demand is back, but supply is still catching up to it. And so we're seeing rising prices. When demand is higher than supply, prices go up. And that's what we're seeing now. The big risk of inflation here is that it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. Um, this is where companies raise their prices of their goods and that of what they pay to their employees in the expectation of inflation. Um, this is the big scary thing to happen here. There's not yet clear indication that this is happening, but it's something that we very much need to keep our eye on. Um, what we're seeing right now in the Ukraine is the second big reason. Um, Putin has been flexing his fossil fuel fueled, fossil fuel fueled muscles. Um, to invade and uh, meet his geopolitical aims. Um, and it's put a uh, kind of the Western world in, in, in Europe, um, in the US, in this crisis of how to respond. Um, this has had a lot of implications in the energy market, which we'll talk on about in a sec. But just in general, um, it un geopolitical uncertainty is not something that investors like very much. It's uncertain how that this is going to play out. Um, and the third thing here is high, high oil prices. Um, oil prices have gone way up. Um, and there is this historical um, narrative that when oil prices go up, um, it is negatively uh, impacts the stock market. And this just isn't true. There's actually not not been any um, measured historical trend between oil prices and the overall stock market performance. This is the Cleveland Fed who um, took a look at this um, back during the last big oil spike, which was in the 2000s, and found that there was really just no correlation, whether it was negative or positive, it was basically flat um, between the two of these. So that is what's going on right now. And that kind of explains this dip um, that we're seeing from the top here. Um, so what should you do about it? As long-term investors, which if you're watching this, you probably are, um, the best thing to do is one of two things. One is nothing. Hold. The worst time to sell is right now. Um, this graph is really interesting. It is the um, the times of the when the stock market retreated into a bear market. You can see how long they lasted compared to the times when it was a bull market and how much it went up. They've all historically been quite short, especially compared to the bull markets that followed them. Um, if you need the money and want to sell, um, it is often best to wait to do that. Obviously, if you need it right now, that's what you should do. And that just is an unfortunate timing um, of that investment strategy. Uh, but in general, it's always best to hold here um, because America is very invested in the stock market and it comes back. The last time we saw a big crash was in March 20th uh, in COVID where the S&P 500 dropped 34%. It had fully recovered 25 weeks later. That's less than half a year. And it just kept on climbing after that. The other adage here is from Warren Buffett. We said, be fearful when others are greedy and griefy, greedy when others are fearful. This is the time to buy. Everything is on sale right now. This is especially true in the renewable energy sector um, where prices have been depressed. So this is a good time to get stocks for 80 cents on the dollar. 
Um, because as we can see now, this is a screenshot from today uh, in terms of fear and greed, very much in the fear side of it. So if you want to follow in Buffett's footsteps, be greedy when others are fearful, this is the time to do it. Um, there are a couple silver linings here, uh, especially from a sustainable investing perspective. That first is the geopolitical pressure to reduce fossil fuel dependence. Um, with Putin saying, hey, I've got all this natural gas, Europe, what, what are you going to do about it? Um, that makes having energy independence seem a lot more attractive. I mean, you, yes, there's many other reasons, especially from a climate perspective, that having a economy that runs on wind, solar, batteries, and nuclear makes a lot of sense. Um, but this is very much one of them. Dictators around the world, those that have fossil fuels, will use them, tend to use them to the best uh, of their abilities to meet their own aims. This is a very good example of that happening. Um, if Germany didn't have to worry about natural gas from Europe, it would have a, potentially a lot more tools, or at the very least, would have a lot lower risk in directly confronting Putin over issues like this. The second thing is that high gas prices generally lead to more demand for uh, gas guzzling alternatives. So this is more efficient cars, this is hybrids, but this is especially electric cars. Electric cars are already cost less um, to fuel per mile than gas. This is especially true if you're using solar at home. And uh, electric car sales have already been climbing really rapidly. So 22 is going to set to be electric cars best year ever, and it's likely going to be even better for that. Um, so uh, this is definitely an industry that if you're looking to invest in growth is probably a good one to be in. Um, and especially the fact that 52% of the oil used in the US goes into cars and trucks. Electric cars are just better. They're a better technology um, and they are replacing them. 36%, 36.7% of that oil is just light duty vehicles, which is like your and my passenger cars. That's a lot of oil demand that's gonna go away in this transition. So this is part of the reason why we at Carbon Collective say, probably makes sense to be invested in this and not be a long-term investor in oil because it's getting disrupted away. So with that, the conclusion here is stay, hold the course. Um, we're experiencing turbulence. This happens. Um, if you do want to ch make a change, wait. Um, and if you have the cash and uh, want to do it now, it's a great time to buy the dip. Thanks so much. We're here for any questions.